Hello, I hope you're all well. Um, welcome to the first of the ABBA podcast, Pod Bites. Um, the Pod Bites are just going to be short thoughts that I, I want to throw out there so that all of you lovely people can chew on it, debate it, disagree with it. I don't really mind. These are just thoughts and ideas I'm tossing around in my own head and, and haven't fully formulated into like a full understanding. Feel free to engage with the ABBA podcast on Twitter. Just search for at ABBA podcast or get in touch through the Facebook page. The page is the ABBA podcast with John McDonald. And of course, podcast episodes can be downloaded or listened to through Spotify, Amazon Music, my own podcast website on Podbean, and most of the usual app, podcast apps like Apple and everything else, Google. Just search for ABBA podcast with John McDonald and you'll find it. Let's get started. You know, for some time, I've been wondering about the whole revival thing. It's, it comes in waves and, and there's clamours for revival and how can we get revival. And there have been prayer meetings and groups and outreaches all aimed at stirring up revival. I used to go to some of these, you know, uh, pray and ask God to bring revival to the earth. It's not a, a bad desire to see an outbreak of faith take place and but it, that's how it was always presented that somehow God would in response to our prayers would just break out amongst the population and people would get saved and turn to turn to Christ and the common scripture that that I heard in all of this was in 2nd Chronicles seven fourteen. you know if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I, I bought into it all over the years. But in recent times, it, I've been troubled by this, this pattern of praying and, and beseeching God and basing it on this scripture. You know, that verse in Second Chronicles 7, it's set at the time when Solomon's temple has been dedicated. And for centuries, the temple was the focus of Israel's worship. That was the resting place for the Ark of the Covenant. It's where God dwelt. Highly symbolic for Jewish people. The presence of the temple spoke of God's continuing presence with them and his approval of the nation. And so the temple was the focal point of not just Jewish religion, but Jewish identity even. And it's such as its importance that today, even Judaism and and its uh, sympathizers seek for a third temple to be built. You know, the temple was built by Nebuchadnezzar and then it was rebuilt again and, and the Romans destroyed it. And the, the prayer that is being encouraged in 2 Chronicles 7 is against a background of the heavens being closed, resulting in plague and famine. But I have to say that for believers in Jesus, there is no close to heaven. Because of what Jesus did in his life and death and his resurrection, the New, teaches, the New Testament teaches us that the way to God is permanently open. We're continually in his presence. Now, whether we realize that and walk in that knowledge is, that's another matter. Some of us do, some of us don't. But the blessing of God is never withdrawn. I don't believe that it ever was really. But thanks to Jesus, we live in an open heaven that God does not close. So that prayer is for a different situation. And I wonder, you know, like the Jews who, who wept and, and still weep for the temple and all of its symbolism. You know, are we harping back to what God did years ago in the past and we're saying, do it again, do it again. And we're, it's almost like we've got rose tinted glasses looking back to an, an era that, that we romanticized and didn't, really exist you know I think it's the same with the whole temple thing people look back to the temple and, and wish that they, it could be re-established but listen the temple was full of prostitution and corruption and false gods even being set up in it alongside Yahweh some of the people in Israel believed that there were more than one God but just that Yahweh was the greater of them all and so they, they would worship a panoply of, of, of deities of whom Yahweh was just the chief. 
you know, we pursue supernatural manifestations, we call it revival, but a lot of what we're pursuing and, and, and calling for revival is really based on human achievement and effort. We pray, you know, we heal the sick, we preach the gospel. And when it happens, we, well, we, we say with our words, God did this, but really there's a part of us that thinks, I prayed that into being. What if this whole seeking after revival is really just the vanity of man? What if revival in this generation is not what we've seen in the past? What if revival in this generation is love? Love poured out of the heart of our Father into the hearts of human beings. What if that's the revival we're looking for? But because we're looking elsewhere, we're missing. You know, people would reject that because it's not spectacular enough. It doesn't showcase God the way miracles and supernatural does. But let me tell you, I've seen dozens and dozens of miracles over the years. I've seen people's legs grow. I've seen people getting rid of walking sticks and, and walking frames being thrown away. I've seen fibromyalgia healed completely. I've seen people unable to work because of sickness and pain being healed and going back to work. And they haven't led to a mass invasion of church services by non-believers. That, that just simply hasn't happened. You know, revival means to restore. And in all the clamor, all the fervent prayer, what is it we're asking God to restore? Perhaps we really are just like the Jews, looking back romantically to the, the temples and wishing for it again. We fashioned, like them, an ideal, a utopian dream. And we're focusing on God, begging him to make that dream of ours happen. But what if God is saying, I did that, it's not what I'm doing now. What if we're looking over here for this great outpouring and God is saying, but my love has been poured out over here. What if he's saying, people, this is what I have for you. Love is the revival you're looking for. Love will restore life. Love will restore joy. Love will restore peace to my people. Love is what will make faith attractive again. And I'm convinced that in this revelation of the fatherhood of God, we can find the seeds of what people think of as revival. Because love is the very essence of God. Yes, God does miracles and healings and prophecy. But God is not a miracle or a healing or a prophetic word. John tells us God is love. And if we really want the world to see what God is like, we seek first his kingdom. And his kingdom is filled with love because God himself is love. He is the love that fills the kingdom. You know, Jesus encouraged us, didn't he, that if we focus on seeking that, all these other things will be added. You see, things like miracles, prophecy, they don't produce love necessarily. That's what Paul writes about in, in 1 Corinthians 13. And he says, you know, we can have all of these things, but if we don't have love, they're worth nothing. But this here's the thing. When we're walking in love, love will begin to produce these things because love will always reach out to the stranger, to the, to the people. You know, we've saw the lost as targets and strangers and sinners, but actually what God is asking us to do is to reach out to lost brothers and sisters with his love. But unless we know that love ourselves, we have nothing to reach out with. And so we look for the, the demonstrations of wonderful things to try and fill the void of love. I think if we want to see the restoration of anything, we make love our goal. You know, I'm reminded of the old Frankie Goes to Hollywood song. It says, the power of love, a force from above, cleansing my soul, flame on, burn desire. Love with tongues of fire, purge the soul, make love your goal. And I think that's my perspective at the moment, that love is the revival that we're waiting for. And the greater the love increases, the more attractive faith in Christ becomes to our lost brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you again. Bye-bye.